I would like to tell you why I'm more than Pleasure. impressed uh, this time. Um, when I came to Iceland on Sunday, I was very impressed that uh, I was able to see some Nordic lights because I was never ever able to see um, such kind of lights. I asked the organizer from GECOM um, to organize a fishing trip for me on Monday and there was a lot of uh, much concern because of the wind. But the wind was calm at least until uh, we finished with the, uh, with the fishery. And then they told me that I will have snow this year because in Berlin we don't have snow. The consequence is that I'm very much impressed that this cluster management has the nature so much under control. Uh, that means if you have the nature under control, to set up a very competitive, innovative cluster is nothing special. So um, I'm really impressed, and when I will come next time to Iceland, I will be impressed what, how you deal with the nature. But I do not talk about uh, the nature and ha how uh, to have it under control. I would like to give you some inside views about cluster policy and cluster um, development. I'm an engineer, I'm not an economist, and uh, my succeeder will explain you a little bit more what is a cluster. Let's try to simplify, you know, engineers try to simplify everything to start with what is a cluster. Um, this is a very interesting study, some years old, but I guess it's still re very relevant. What are the sources for innovation? Um, and if you look on the right side, you see the main sources on innovation. Um, about 500 uh, CEOs of many companies worldwide has been asked, wh where are your innovations coming from? And it's not a surprise, but I guess we should have in mind uh, once again, where are the innovations coming from? From business partners, from customers, from competitors. That means from all these sources which are very much around you. Very sorry for the academia, the importance of uh, creating innovations is reduced over the last uh, years, so academia is only on uh, second place. Of course, they do play a very important role, but we have a lot of innovations worldwide where you do not need academia. And the right side, um, uh, the left side is no surprise as well, employees are also a very important source of innovation. When we talk about cluster, then Let's try to put all these external sources we have, competitors, consultants, customer, together. Because when I'm a company and I'm very much benefit from them, I would like to have them close to me. And when we talk about cluster policy, then we often say, okay, we organize a cluster organization, a cluster management, we put it in this um, agglomeration. And when we talk about cluster policy, we mainly talk in Europe how to network the actors, because clusters are natural given ag uh, agglomerations. You, of course, you can increase some, the number of companies, but you cannot change so much on the actors as such. Cluster policy means how to bring them to cooperate, how to bring them to, to work together in order to better explore the sources of innovation which are around you. So, by my point of view, we can start with such simple uh, idea what we are talking about when we mean a, a cluster. And if you set up a cluster organization, like the cluster management from IGECON, and if you provide a good framework condition, then you have a perfect uh, cluster. So that is the theory. We will see later on how uh, it looks in practice. <laughs> and when, we talk, uh, when policy makers talk about uh, cluster policy, um, they can increase the framework conditions, in innovation-friendly conditions. I would like to give you an example. Uh, some years before, the uh, city of Leipzig, you do not need to know it, it's uh, something uh, in between in Germany. It was a quite a rural area. We have some car manufacturing, but not more, not less. And then policymaker set up um, an airport, nothing special as well. We have a lot of airports. But they allowed this airport or the, the airplanes that they can come in and get out all over the night. And that is a big debate in Germany. The most airports are not allowed to be operated all the nights. The result was that this airport at Leipzig became one of the log logistics hubs uh, in the center of Germany. And the key reason was that the framework conditions are much better than, than others. So that means you can much, very much Im uh, improve the performance of the cluster if you increase the framework conditions. And if you set up clusters, you should also have in mind how can you start with improving the framework conditions. 
that is much more uh, important, has a much higher impact than R&D money or cluster organization. Of course, what we see too is that almost all clusters in Europe do have a cluster organization. They are sitting in the, in the driver's seat and they, and I will give you some examples later on, they will make the difference. That means cluster organization, cluster management becomes more and more important um, as in order to increase the added value of the cluster approach. However, I would like to start with some trends in cluster development. The first trend we see is that the professionalization of cluster management improved over time. We are, far, we are much more proceed. We do not talk about what is a cluster and how to set up a cluster. When we talk about trends is that how we can make cluster management more professional. What are the tools, what are the competences that the cluster management who aims, as I mentioned at the beginning, try to network, to motivate uh, partners, to cooperate. Which tools do they know? Which kind of services they, uh, they need in order to be more professional? Here you can see from this picture uh, a tool which has been is successfully used by a cluster in, in Austria. They have set a, a customer relations system, management system, in order to better get in contact with all their members, with all their clients, in order to provide much better services, in order to faster react to their needs than a normal cluster management. That means cluster uh, professionalization becomes very important. The other issue is, or the other f challenge cluster managers in Europe face is, they, that the funding, the public funding, will be reduced over time. So if you set up a cluster, cluster management very often get 100% public funding. They are fine because they have to start to work. But over time, policymakers remember, okay, so we have to save money, so you do not only need to get 50%, 30% public money. That means um, if a cluster management would like to, stay, uh, to remain sustainable, they have to set up new services, N services who are paid by someone else, by academia, by companies. And what we see is that uh, professional cluster management, they develop new services where the members are ready to pay for. A short indication gives this slide here. It is also cluster management in Austria. And you can see how they have increased the incomes based on, uh, on fees. So orange. Um, um, part is the membership fees. They didn't change much um, over time here. But what you can see here is they implemented a lot of new services to their members and services who provide added values cl cluster members are ready to pay for. And by doing so, they were able to increase the private share of money and to reduce the public dependency of public money considerably. And so they turn from a funding objective to an innovation service provider in order to, to offer services uh, more um, tailor-made to their, to their clients. Policymakers are happy because they can reduce money. Policymakers are not that much happy that if you reduce the public funding to zero because then they cannot interfere the cluster management. And policymakers do like to interfere to have the cluster management under control. So policymakers will never give up at least to fund you for a small part, at least in Germany. Here you can see some clusters, how they succeeded to, to increase the private funding share because that is, as I mentioned, a very hot topic in, 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 in Europe. And you can see here many of the clusters in Austria that started with 5% private um, funding. That means 95% public funding. And over time, after they are matured, and that is the important uh, word I would like to see, say, they increased their private share. But what you can also see, and that is also very important for policymaker, here is a different level. That doesn't mean that one cluster manager is doing better than the other. The, the explanation is that cluster managers here, they have, have set up services which are very much needed by the industry. Here, you have services uh, which are more inter uh, for the benefit of the public. And if you uh, set up services for the public interest, you cannot ask the companies to pay for. That means there is not an idle private fi uh, funding sh uh, financing share. It very much depends on the field you are active in. So it is possible, but what you can also see is 100% is almost not possible. So a matured cluster will end up between 50 and 70% private funding uh, after they have been matured. There's also a very important trend. It sounds easy, but it's very important that network cluster managers realize that they can 
become the key driver for innovation. Uh, innovation sounds easy, but those of you who are coming from companies, those of you who are coming from small and medium enterprises, you know how difficult it is to be innovative. R&D, I will show you late, later, is coming in the uh, later stage. At the beginning, you have to know what are the market trends, what are your customers uh, do need. And that is very difficult for SMEs. I'm, um, myself, I'm responsible for a company uh, with 150 members, and I very well know how difficult it is in in reality to become innovative. Cluster managers who know the demands, who have built trust among the actors, they are a very promising tool to support companies to innovate because they know who has to talk to whom and how they can initi initiate. And companies are very thankful if such a cluster management have um, supported them to set up such kind of innovation. So innovation becomes very um, important and cluster managers be, uh, beca are becoming a very active part of that. I would like to explain it here. Here you can see the typical value chain, how you create, how, what are you doing in the field of cluster innovation management. At the beginning you have to set up some ideas and you have to analyze them. Is it the right trend? Are the customers interested? What are the, is the competitors doing? Is there any market? And then if you are still convinced, then you are doing some research. And what you can see here, here are, is how active cluster management could be. That means at the very beginning, they, as I mentioned, they can bring the right partners together. They can moderate the process. Later on, if it comes to research, then we have the academia. So you do not need to have any innovation, uh, cluster management at that part. But in the end, if it comes to the question how to commercialize a new product, the new technologies. Then the cluster management once again is in the driving force. They know the partners. They can support, especially SMEs, how to commercialize their projects. And that's a very specific t uh, topic and a very specific service cluster management can offer. And you know innovation becomes more and more relevant. That means that is a good field cluster of management can um, focus on. And when we talk about many clusters later today, we always have in mind what can cluster management provide for added value. Is there any possibility that, it, that innovation can be fostered by means of cluster management? What we also see, it, this is a slide you should not understand. That is, uh, it's not an accident. It was clear in my mind to show, especially to policymakers, that clusters very much differ. What you can see here is different structural features of clusters, like the age, the, uh, how specialized they are, how, much me how many members they have. And you can see here the value of 100, the average value will be compared more than 150 clusters. And the only message I would like to post is clusters in different industries are different. So please do not treat clusters from different industries in the same way. That is the only key message I want to post. It do not want to go more into details. What we see, especially in Germany, you have a cluster initiative. All the clusters get the same funding. All the clusters get the same support from different industries. In the end, German cluster policymakers are very surprised that some clusters develop better than the others. Don't treat them all in the same, same way. Now I'm moving to cluster policy, and do I hope not to uh, borrow the others who is not, are not coming from the policy level. One slide I'm very happy about that one um, is it clearly showed, and we have for the first time uh, a clear empiric evidence that if a cluster management is very active, the high impact is higher. I would like to explain it to you here. We asked 150 cluster managers all over Europe. They have to assess the impact of on what they have done on their SMEs. That means values around three and four means high impact on the business activities of companies. Zero and one means low impact. And what you can see here is the intensity of services. It's a complicated indicator, but however, it means cluster managers are very active here. They are very passive here. And what you can clearly can see is if a cluster manager is very active, or the management as such, if they offer a lot of services, if they offer a broad spectrum of services, it is very likely that the SMEs, and we're talking mainly talking about the SMEs, um, very much benefit of this approach. That means cluster means much more than drinking coffee. Cluster means much more nice brochure. Cluster managements have to work. 
in order to provide added values to their companies. And that means when we talk about cluster support from the policy point of view, it's not enough to pay one or two people to organize a cluster management. It's not enough to put R&D money into a cluster. You have to actively support the cluster management to become active. Because if they act, uh, active, if they implement tailor-made services on the, uh, on the benefit of companies, you will get a lot of pretty uh, nice outcomes, especially if you focus on those industries which are very strong um, in, in your country. Scientists are trying to identify other determinants of cluster success. We are very sorry, based on our investigations, we are convinced that cluster management plays a very important role. I would like to explain it here. The, green, the blue line means we checked clusters who sh have shown high positive impact. We compared the structural features with those who are average. That means green. That means high value means they are, um, have different values than the green one. And what we can see here is that those who are very successful, that means the blue one, and those who are on average, the difference when it comes to certain structural features, once again, like age, size, and all these things, they do not much differ so much. The only difference is that the number of members is higher. That is no surprise, because if you have a high critical uh, num um, number of members, it's more likely that the cluster is quite strong. Of course, it seems to be that the, um, if the cluster, which is more oriented on industry issue, shows higher impact to the industry, there's no surprise as, as well. And of course, uh, if a cluster is well structured, that means the cluster organization has a strong governance, it seems to be that clusters are more successful. But the, the other indicators are not the same. And if you talk about, is there any difference between R&D clusters and industrial driven clusters? Please forget about it. In all cases, the cluster management is in the driving seat. And even in R&D-driven clusters, cluster management can offer good services, more than only providing R&D money, in order to uh, improve the outcomes of the cluster approach. That means, once again, the cluster management is in the driving seat. And I'm very happy that you, as a cluster management, are can organize this conference. It shows the cluster management is very important. The other things, the other items are important as well. But if you want to make the difference, the cluster management is very often uh, the reason for that. Um, I would like to skip this. So what we have seen is, because there are a lot of different services uh, possible to be done by, a company, uh, by cluster management, you can see some services which might have a high impact on, on companies. And high impact is a key word in cluster policy. Cluster policy makers, they invest in companies, they need success stories, they need to justify their, um, their um, investments. And that means key success stories and um, impact analysis are very important. And what we can see here is, of course, internal meeting, bringing companies and actors together is very important. And also workshops and events uh, are very important as well. And if these kind of activities are combined with providing public money for R&D activities or for other um, support activities. This, this seems to be a quite promising mixture of services which have a high impact on them. So we wouldn't say that the other kind of services are not so relevant, but if a cluster management offers good services in that direction, it seems to be that they can provide high impact. That means for policymakers, if they support clusters, they should clearly show what, uh, or check, or monitor or what cluster management uh, are doing. What we often see is you have to write a good proposal if you want to get funded. Policymaker carefully evaluates this proposal, but after granting the, the money, they do, don't take care of until the project ends. And so policymakers should clearly closely monitor what cluster management are doing and some midterm assessments and all the other tools would be very promising to take care that the <coughs> money has been spent in a wise way. So summarizing all these, and that is something we would like to address to policymaker. Of course, if you set up a structure, you must have a cluster, you must have a good structure, you must have an industrial uh, high potential, you have to, uh, at least a certain number of cluster actors, and all these things coming from the theory here, all the governance and sustainable funding. Of course, cluster management do need a strategy. So I, if I visit a cluster, I would like to see a clear strategy from a cluster management. What are you doing different from the others? Do you have any strategy? How do you want to provide added value uh, for your members? And if you combine these 
these, um, these items with a good cluster management, as I mentioned, then it is very likely that your cluster will increase their visibility and show a lot of uh, high impact. So that is something cluster policymakers should have in mind if they set up new clusters, that they take care that they really implement a good cluster management, not only a good cluster approach. What we also can see is that we do have too many, cl too much, many clusters in Europe. Each country, each region is very proud of having uh, clusters. I'm coming from Berlin. It's a capital, but it's not a very strong industrial-driven uh, city. We have 30, 40 clusters. None. You can forget 38 out of the 40. In Baden-Württemberg, which is a strong area in the southwest, we have 150 cluster-like entities. It's too much. A policymaker have to fund all of them and they have to try to know how they can get out of it. So what we can see in, in cluster policy issues is cluster policy makers focus on the most competitive clusters. And that is a good approach that um, you should not create too many clusters which are not really com uh, competitive. You should focus on, on the best ones. And I, here you can see three different uh, cluster programs in Europe and all of them, they have reduced the number of clusters. They have initiated. So there's a strong pressure on the cluster management and also on policymaker to reduce the cluster, um, the amount of cluster, because most of them are not really competitive. Most of them are not really what we have in mind as a strong cluster. So, and we are convinced that the dying of clusters will increase in the next time, and we guess that only the most competitive clusters will um, remain in the future. And that's the reason why cluster management becomes more and more important. Uh, in the future. Here you can see um, one example. You can see cluster initiatives in Germany on federal state level and a federal level. What you can see here from 2009, 2010 ongoing, we do not have any new cluster initiative in Germany because, a new one, because we have enough cluster. So what we are currently facing is in our new programs, how can we select the most competitive one and what are we doing with the others? So that's a right approach, we have more than 2,000 in Germany, much, too much, so we focus with our new programs how to can, we can make clusters more stronger and not to initiate the creation of new clusters. Tools, I mentioned, tools for policy makers are become more important. How can I distinguish a, a good cluster to a non-competitive cluster or a high potential cluster uh, I can compare it with someone else? So what we can see is that there are new tools in force to make it for easier for policymakers to, to, to select the right clusters. And if you, as a cluster manager, would like to get in contact with others, so do you have any tools? Do you know which of the other potential partners are nice to drink coffee and which are the real right ones? So what we have seen is that, for example, the benchmarking of cluster management, that means a voluntary comparison, a voluntary learning from the best, became very promising. And uh, Gikon was also involved in such ben benchmarking exercises uh, end of last year, end of 2010, and we compared them with others in order to give them some ideas how they can do better. So we are benchmarking, or my team is benchmarking cluster management all over Europe, and what we can see is that this kind of voluntary, once again, voluntary, policymakers do not get the report. It's only for the cluster management, and that makes a difference. Uh, cluster um, managers learn how how to compare with the best and how to make them um, stronger, how to better professionalize. The, co uh, the commission is initiating an approach, quality labeling we are a little bit concerned about, but uh, however, that means a certain kind of certification of cluster management. I'm not really convinced that's the right uh, idea, but the rational behind is that if the commission, the eight framework program, that means in the next period, would like uh, to strengthen the cluster approach. They would like to know what, where are the good cluster managements and where are those that are not that much proceeded. That means this kind of quality labeling could help to focus, to provide added money, uh, European money, uh, to the right ones. And once again, impact assessments is, are very important because that is not uh, very easy, how to measure the impact uh, of a cluster. Um, by statistics, it's very difficult. If you compare someone, you have to compare your, your cluster actors with someone else. So it's not really easy to, to find uh, solutions who can really show a cluster perform better than the others. 
And um, so um, that is something where policymakers invest in science, how to set up, uh, how to come up with new approaches to really uh, measure the success of uh, cluster initiatives. But there's another very interesting topic, and um, I talked with a little before. Um, you know, electromobility is high on the agenda, and every country tries to compete. And I would like to give an example how cluster managements can be utilized to, to increase the leverage effect of different innovation activities. Um, you can see here Germany, the landscape, and some regions which have been selected as so-called model regions for electromobility. You might know the key success factor for electromobility is not the battery and not the car itself, it's the infrastructure. If you are not able to provide and provide the infrastructure, you will never succeed with, cluster, uh, with, uh, with electromobility uh, driven cars. So it means uh, the key success factor is how to, to create uh, the right framework, framework conditions uh, for electromobility. And then coming back to the framework condition idea I mentioned at the beginning. So what policymakers are doing is they selected the most promising reason for, for um, electromobility and they actively involved the cluster managements in order to help to develop these regions. Cluster management, I have shown, uh, have told you the advantages. So why do we should not link the cluster management in the automotive sector with a new field of electromobility? Here's an example from the western, very western part of uh, Germany, where um, the Rhine-Ruhr area, where a lot of car manufacturers like GM or Opel are located, they involved the cluster management, the automotive cluster management, to set up new services to support the infrastructure activity in order to make this Rhine-Ruhr area as one of the most promising electromobility regions in the future. So it is fine that you have two different innovative approaches, the model regions and the cluster management, and you use the cluster management as a, as a tool to leverage other innovation support measures. And that is something what we also see, that we move from supporting R&D separately from clusters. We are linking, we see that more and more innovation activities are linked and clusters are used, cluster managements are used to improve this leverage effect. So in the end, I would like to give you some additional thoughts for policymaker. What we see is that, or if you consider a certain region, you, so, uh, you can divide them in, in three areas. You can say, okay, it is more a remote area, a rural area where you have some industry, but that is not that much competitive. And you can support cluster, uh, such kind of cluster. We can see that a lot of cluster policymakers try to set up national champions. That means they are among the best in, an, in the country, but not international visibility. And then the best word of uh, world-class clusters. And when I group clusters uh, in Germany, it's quite easy to, to group them according to these three mm, levels. What we see is that policymakers sometimes um, try to set up a cluster which is coming in the rural area and want them to become world-class clusters, and that will definitely not be possible. That means cluster policymakers, if they set up some cluster, they have, should have some realistic objectives. That also means, does mean, that you, if, you so, uh, if you want to support a cluster from a rural area, you have to support it in a different way than those who have the ambition to be a world-class cluster, meaning the geothermal cluster in Iceland, they should be supported by a political point of view, different uh, than other clusters might be in a rural area. You cannot use the same, the same tools. Uh, for example, if you start to set up to improve a cluster in a remote area, you have to heavily invest in the infrastructure, roads, schools, availability of people. I told you the example of the airport in Leipzig. There are so many different uh, examples um, available. You have to invest in the framework condition. It doesn't make sense to give the cluster actors R&D money because they are far away to be, um, to be ready for uh, a lot of R&D activities. But what you should also uh, focus on a good cluster organization, a cluster management, bring together all these people, I told you. I gave you some uh, examples at the beginning. That means policymakers should focus on that and they should invest on long term. You have to accept many years until you can see some real advantage if you start in rural areas. If you have good cluster potential and if you want to set up a national champion, you have to use a, go a different way. 
The framework conditions are much better, so you do not need to heavily invest in the infrastructure. R&D money, direct support of companies might be okay, but uh, companies, um, clusters who want to become national champion, they need to start how to cooperate, how to become innovative, and so that means the cluster management uh, plays a very, very important role, and what we see is if, you, if a cluster organization, a cluster management is playing a good role, you can improve companies which want to become national champions very, uh, very actively. When we talk about world-class clusters, and you know policymakers would like to talk about world-class clusters, then you have to focus on, on cluster actors. Then you have to provide them with R&D money. Then you have to provide them with tools that they can really become world-class and internationally seen. <coughs> Public investment in framework condition might be in some cases you need them, but it very much depends on the industry, smart investments. At that stage, the cluster organization is excellent, so you do not need heavily invest in that. The world-class cluster means the cluster management is excellent and they know what to do, so they do not need to fund them too much. Might be you help them to create new services to, become, uh, to, provide, uh, to increase their professional, uh, professionality. But that means here you can see um, how uh, you can see that you have to uh, support the cluster actors. That is as an engineer, very simply structured, but it should point out, please policymaker, know what, have realist, realistic expectations, and then try to come up with the right approach. Some very, very final comments. Where is Iceland, for example, compared to the other I mentioned to you that we benchmarked um, 150 clusters in uh, Europe and three as well. It will not be a hit list, don't, don't be afraid. But what we can see here, and that's also what you have in, in mind, we compared clusters from different countries according to the average age. And it's no surprise clusters in Iceland are quite young. It's fine, so you can avoid errors we made in the past. You can pick up the best ideas from the Swedish, Norwegian, might be from Germany as well. So you are in a quite good position, so I would, would not like to justify that is better than the others. But uh, your clusters are younger and you cannot expect so short-term results when like we can uh, expect from ours who are much older. Clusters in Iceland are comparable. Small, you can see here the average, what we have seen is about 30, 40 actors, members, you can call it uh, as you want. It's no surprise because Iceland is a small country, but you have also to deal with that as well. And for example, Finnish clusters tend to be bigger and uh, Polish, it's interesting, they tend to be smaller, very often they are un under critical. So if you set up and support clusters, you should have in mind they are smaller and might be they do need different support than us. The industry structure is also different. Let's focus on the SMEs. SMEs are the key drivers and always in the focus of policymakers. We can see here a typical cluster in Denmark has around 60 um, percent of the members are um, SMEs. In Poland, uh, around 50 percent. In Iceland, a quite a small number of SMEs are involved. That might be a little bit uh, a challenge. But on the other side, what we see, and that is fine on, on the other side, that's the share of universities and R&D institutions, it's much higher, there are the blue fields. And so it will be a good challenge to combine the uh, advantages of academia and, and the company. So once again, we have some disadvantages and some advantages, but your industrial or your partner mixture is different, and for the cluster management and for policymaker, you have to take care of this issue as well. Some advantages, by my point of view. High regional agglomeration, that means uh, clusters are very much <coughs> focused. No surprise uh, for Iceland, uh, all the other uh, results would be very uh, difficult if you are not um, have such a high agglomeration, but that is a clear advantage. The high proximity, which is based, and the all supporter approach is based on high agglomeration uh, proximity. You have excellent conditions because the partners are very close to each other. So if you bring them to cooperate, there's no excuse, I'm too far away, or all these issues. So you have 95% uh, agglomeration, that means in all the clusters in Iceland we have benchmarked, all 95% of the partners were very close, located very close to, to each other. So you can use this one as a clear advantage. 
And what we also can see is here is the average funding, public funding rate of cluster management. And here you can see, although Iceland is quite young, you are very much in the, uh, on average with all of that. That means in that case, the average funding rate of the cluster management is around 50, 50, 60 percent. That is fine. What we see a little bit concerned is that cluster management in Finland has a much higher funding rate. So they are relaxed. They say, okay, I get public funding. I do not need to work according to the interest of the companies. So 100 percent public funding might be, if you are matured, a little bit difficult. So the Polish are always fighting for money, so they could, cannot focus on cluster management. They are uh, trying to grab all the money. So that means this is a good starting point. You are young, but you are not overfunded, and you can, as a policymaker and a cluster manager, do make a lot of, out of it. So thanks a lot for sharing my thoughts, and I'm very interesting, happy to discuss these sometimes a little bit provocative comments with you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>